Okay, buckle up. Today we're taking a wild ride on automated trading with Composer. I've talked about Composer before. I've used it in several of my videos, but today we're gonna to be diving into what it actually looks like with automated trading, whether we can buy low and sell high. Does that actually work? We're also gonna be taking a deeper dive into what it looks like from, from a, uh, a chat GPT or a BARD standpoint when we get recommendation and we're gonna use that, the generative AI that, that's provided through these uh, large language models in order to start trading and what do our returns or what are, could our potential returns look like. So if you're all interested in that, please stick around until the end. I also wanna say thanks for everyone for tuning in. I know we're headed towards the end of the year. I'm gonna have some great content for you to kickstart your 2024, make your finances resilient, for whatever may come. All right. First up, we need to understand what is automated trading. You know, when I say that, does that mean somebody behind the scenes is actually making the trades for you? Is that a computer program? Is it a little bit of both? How does it work? What what level of competency do you need to understand? Do you need to program? Those are all great questions. Let's first understand what automated trading is. It really refers to a mechanical trading system or an algorithmic trading uh, that will allow you to establish rules for both trade entries and exits, so highs and lows, peak and trough. And once you program it, you can automatically execute it with a computer. Uh, everything I'll be going over here today is on my on my desktop. Nothing's on mobile, at least yet. Uh, but you can also here it says 70 to 80 percent of shares traded on the stock exchange come from automated trading systems. Now, automated trading systems could be something like. I have a uh, a market sell order. I have a uh, a bid, a spread. I have a high and a low. So I'm not going to sell unless the stock gets over 100. And I'm not going to buy unless it gets down to 50. Those are all things. Those are all part of algorithmic trading. Although those are much less sophisticated than the things we're going to be going over today. Uh, the trade entry and exit can be based on conditions such as moving averages or crossover. So if again, if you look at this, if you look at this picture here, you'll see a stock here. I'll buy it. I take profit here, I wait for it to go back down for a buy, then I take more profit here, I buy it again, et cetera, et cetera. Those are just crossovers, there's iron cross, there's tons of different trading patterns you can get into, especially when it comes to options trading uh, and, and buying puts and calls uh, on a particular stock. Now, one thing you normally need to do is you need to establish rules, and those are what are called technical indicators, whether it's a 50-day moving average, a 200-day moving average, uh, a lot of traders will look at what it's done over the 50, the 200, even the 365. I also talked a, a minute ago about stop losses, trailing losses. Those are other ways you can actually move into a stock or an equity uh, or even options. Now, advantage, minimizing emotions. I've talked many, many times before on this channel about how detrimental it can be to write out emotions when it comes to your finances, especially when it comes to stocks and bonds. Um, or even cash where you know you might panic sell or you might panic buy this removes all that so you're able to minimize your emotions and bring your portfolio into an automated standpoint back testing and i'll show you this in a minute we're going to back test we're going to see what that looks like so i can predict what my gains will be of course nothing's perfect we're going to get as close to perfect as we can and this helps discipline and markets have been extremely volatile over the last i would say almost three years when the new administration came in and there was some in the previous one too but election years tend to have a lot of volatility i expect to see that into 2024 so this could make a lot of sense for you order speed you're able to get your trades in much easier than having to click you're able to diversify your trading so some of the cons though real quick are mechanical failures you have the algorithm or the computers go down that could be an issue of course you're going to have that on a manual trade anyways uh monitoring there might be more anomalies and then it might start to over optimize Real quick, let's look at what Composer actually looks like. So this is a video straight from YouTube. I'm gonna play this uh, and I'm gonna show you exactly what it'll look like. So uh, this is something we're gonna look at real quick. All the new functionality with Composer and ChatGPT. So the first thing we can do is we can take an existing symphony, Believe in Big Tech, for example. What this symphony does is it takes the top two of a basket of tech stocks based on the 20 day cumulative return and then rebalances that every month. I want you to look real quick here. If you look on the right side, what the symphony is doing, and this is this is what's called a symphony, and it's nothing more than a, a series of rules that tells you or tells the uh, tells composer what it wants you to do. In this case, every month it's going to pick two assets from this list here with the highest 20-day return and weigh them equally. So for the last month, it looks like uh, so last month it looks like 20% Nvidia, 19's Meta. 16s microsoft etc but it's going to rebalance those every single month so you're not having to sit there and do that and then you can also put downside protection in whether it's gold to gldr 
maybe it's treasury notes, maybe it's bonds, maybe it's cash you want to go diversify in or keep a hold on. That's what it's doing. So I'll continue. What we can do is we can click more and copy ChatGPT prompt. That enables us to put this into ChatGPT and ChatGPT will tell us how the strategy works and you can ask it a variety of questions based on that. What we could do is we could say, let's modify that strategy to have commodities and utilities instead of the tech stocks. And that's what I just went over is you're able to then swap out asset classes or assets in general. Maybe I want less tech and I want some more downside protection like in gold. Maybe I want some blue chips, IBM, Boeing, Coke for just resiliency or dividend appreciation. Explain what ETFs that ChatGPT is picking. So it provides you with the code and it tells you a little bit more in terms of what ETFs it's included. You can then go and remove the code comments, ask it to remove the code comments, which gives you this clean code. You can copy that. And in, the, in our Symphony editor, we've got this new functionality, which is the Paste Chat GPT schema. You can click that and it'll automatically build out that, that Symphony based on what Chat GPT has built in terms of the code. You can then back test that. And I'll stop here again to show that, look, you can go in and individually and start buying up each one of these, these underlying stocks. So GLD, uh, Gilead, uh, SO, DUK, uh, PPLs, PayPal. I can go into something like Robinhood and do a Gilead and I can create an entire portfolio of, I can create a new, I can create a new list here that says automated trading and I can put each one of these stocks in there. But why would I do that if I don't have to? Why would I manually want to add and remove stocks the whole point of automated trading, right? You're not having to get in there and worry about these. You're not having to worry about the, the price. You're not having to worry about the intraday changes. You're able to provide downside protection while also keeping your portfolio extremely diversified. So again, there's nothing wrong with going in here and buying an individual stock, creating a list. If I go back here, I have tons of lists. I went over these before in some of my other videos, but if I'm interested in dividend investing here, and I start to get overweight in one of these port positions, whether it's IBM, Verizon, AT&T, I have no way of course correcting that manually. Now there's other there's other platforms like M1 where you can create pies, but that's just, that's just uh, making sure that each pie is equal. But what if I wanna get more complex? What if I wanna do something a little crazier? That's where Composer comes in. I'll leave a link down in Composer for anyone that's interested and real quick while we're in the middle of this feel free to hit like subscribe leave a comment down below if you're this provides value and you find this interesting i'd love to know what works and what doesn't work i find this very interesting i want to make sure everyone else uh, has the ability to do so as well but composer is actually very simple you saw a quick video there um, i just deposited some more money yesterday into a new symphony I'll, I'll check back and do another video later on of what this looks like. But actually, I invested in a pre-built symphony and you can go in here and discover anything you want. So if I want to do something that has uh, a lot of momentum, let's say I pick a, a trending sector, I can click on this. These are pre-built pre symphonies. I'm able to go through real quick and see what this looks like over the past three years. So it'll compare it to SPY, which is the S&P 500 index fund of all, S of all 500 stocks in the US. Here I can see that over the last uh, three years up here, it's actually outperformed uh, by about 18%. So had I picked this symphony over SPY, I would have had a much better return. I can even go back, see what it looks like. I can go back even further if I want, some more back testing. So let's say I wanna go back all the way to, uh, let's go back 10 years and we'll say 2013 and we'll say October of 2013. I click that. And if I look here, everything was basically the same. Uh, until we hit uh, roughly, what is that, uh, 2017, then things started to really change. Of course, here's where COVID kicked in. SPY was actually doing better at that time, but it started to cross and you'll see this, you'll see right here, it tells you where things started to go the other way. Uh, SPY started to go down and then you notice a big difference in the sector here of what the symphony can do. And down here, I can see very easily what it's invested in. So it's investing in some Vanguard communication index funds. I've got some cash, I've got Vanguard, Vanguard consumer discretionary and Vanguard uh, technology index funds. So again, you know, what's the difference here? Well, can I just go over here and do that? Yeah, I can. And I can buy any Vanguard fund that I want on Robinhood or any platform. I believe that one was VOX. So I can come over here and buy VOX immediately if I want to. And I can add those to a new position and I'm good to go. If I look over the max, this thing's up 120% over the lifetime of the fund back, back to 2004. But again, I'm not able to automate that. If I wanna come in here 
and move some of these out, I can. Now this is just what it's in now, but you have all these different funds in here. These are all look to me as Vanguard funds. So it's very simple. And of course you're still paying the underlying expense ratio on the ETF. If I wanna create one, I actually can. Uh, I can come in here, I can actually copy one or I can create one. One thing I really like about Symphony or about uh, Composer is I can come in here and use some AI, use some automation with ChatGPT on the back end and say, can you build me a portfolio that is all weather and resilient in any environment? If you think about that, that's something everyone wants. We want high returns, low risk, no matter if the market's doing well, the market's doing bad. This is what we want. So I'm gonna hit enter and we're gonna see what it comes back with. So we've got stocks, bonds, commodities, and probably some cash. What I can do here is I'm looking and seeing it's gonna go 30% to S&P 500, 30% to bonds, and then 15% to gold and 15% to the total uh, stock market. So this portfolio is bounced quarterly and has spe specified weights for each asset. That makes sense. Let's back test it and see what it looks like. Okay, we'll move down here. And this is the all weather portfolio. It automatically named it for me. So I can see what it looks like. So we've got SPY, we've got AGG, which is the bonds. We've got commodity exposure and gold, and then we've got the all weather. So we've got four different equities here. And if I run this, uh, if I run this over the last three years, would I have beat the SPY? No, I would not. Over the last five years, three years, I would not. But let's say I wanna go back with just these four index funds and what it looks like over the last 20 years. Did I beat it? Let's see, can it even run that? I don't know that it will. Oh, let's see. Um, yes, I can. So I'd be better off just buying SPY and calling it a day. So right there, I've shown you that you don't not, this won't necessarily work in every situation, but if I want a all weather portfolio, maybe in the future as a recession's coming, it may be better to actually have only a few positions at a low expense at a very simple portfolio versus owning 500, uh equities in the underlying spy all right now let's say i don't know what i'm doing i'm going to actually discard this um, i can come over here and i can say maybe i just want to copy what other people have done if i just want to copy what ray dalio does uh an index uh, hedge fund uh, manager bridgewater maybe i just want to copy what he's done this is vti tlt ief and and gold very similar but again is he is this portfolio actually beating spy and over the last three years, it's not. His portfolio is now an eight and a half per almost 9%. If I just bought SPY and called it a day, uh, I'm up 30%. But a lot of people are probably gonna ask me immediately, okay, if you're telling me that I can just buy SPY, why am I even in here? What's the point? Well, the point is something like this. If you have enough, uh, if you have enough in your, in your uh, res if you have enough reserves and you wanna actually uh, you know, go out on a little bit of a limb. So whether it's crypto, whether it's something with a little more volatility, with a lot higher return, but also a chance for a downside. And this is where Composer and automated trading gets really, really interesting, where you can take these big bets on things that, you know, triple levered ETFs, where you've got options calls, we're doing sweeps. I just mentioned triple levered ETFs. Um, you're, you're, you've got symphonies that just go on and on and on and on and on. I'll pick this one in the Manhattan Project. Somebody built this and this basically will uh, we'll look at six months, 42,000% annual return and a 9.5% drawdown. So DD means drawdown, AR means annual return. If you look at this number over the last three years and you say, this is up 54,195%, how the hell is that possible? Well, one thing is if I go down here, and you start looking at this symphony, look at all the different positions that this thing takes based on if, if and and else rules. I can keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. So for those people that want the ability to say, okay, let's, let's start at the very top. If I, uh, I'm gonna weigh everything equally at 80%, if the seven day relative strength of BIL is less than the seven day rel relative strength index of IEF, we're gonna weigh those equally, and then we're just gonna keep going down and down and down, and we're just gonna start slot filling each one of these equities and each one of these option strategies to fit 
the outcome. So it's a lot of if then else, and you just keep working yourself down the chain. I will tell you, it would be impossible for a human being to sit here and start moving money in and out of every one of these positions at an optimal time for the right amount of money with, with a standard deviation of less than 50%. However, a lot of people immediately ask me and say, okay, if this is true, then why don't you just put all your money in this? Well, for one, we don't have data going back of what it would look like if I go back 20 years. Uh, it may not be com completely accurate, but if I do, you'll notice, I think this will back test, it's basically the same. Um, you'll see this symphony started kick getting kicked off back in 2012. So this hasn't been around for very long, maybe 10 years. It hasn't survived a recession what does that look like? And look, again, I'm not saying this is right or wrong. I'm not saying that you should put money in this or not. I'm just trying to give you all the facts to make sure you can make a educated and informed decision here. Okay, so uh, if I wanna get started with this, what do I do? So head over to composer.trade. You can log in or you can sign up here. There's plenty of resources. You can go straight into an ETF database, ETF comparisons. Uh, if you wanna know what AI uh, looks like under the covers, it does use ChatGPT as the back-end large language model. Um, you can also get into interesting things like what is the difference between artificial intelligence and machine learning? These are all great resources to use. I find Composer is very, very easy to understand, drag and drop, etc. I'm going to leave a link to my Composer down in the description. If you're interested in, in signing up for an account, you do get, uh, I believe it's a free $50 to trade with if you use my link. So I would encourage you to do that. But I am curious, uh, if you're interested in automated trading, was this video helpful? Are you using automated trading today? If you're using call options and puts and you're doing trailing losses and you're using triple levered ETFs, how are you managing that manually, are you? And if you're considering automated trading, what does that look like for you in 2024? But as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below, and don't forget to design your financial freedom.